Hi everyone, Sandman here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Vote for Pedro, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sandman, I live in the greatest feminist state in North America, known as Ontario, much like yourself. I came across an article called America's Hidden Crisis, Men Not at Work. The author Margaret Wen explores this idea brought forth by the economist Nicholas Eberstadt, and I like your opinion on this piece because it appears as though men in North America are going their own way much like the herbivore men in Japan and choosing to opt out of working life. I await your response. Well vote for Pedro, thanks for your donation as well as your topic request. Nicholas Eberstadt calls these men the unworking because apparently there are now 7 million men between the ages of 25 and 54 in the United States choosing not to work at all. He also wrote a book called Men Without Work, America's Invisible Crisis. So men in their prime age for work are opting out in greater numbers. Society is about to experience a rude wake-up call when enough such individual males give up on working entirely and just sit at home choking the chicken and playing video games. Recently I did another video about how women aren't paying tax and when men finally catch up with them, modern Western societies and states will go bankrupt and the whole social welfare state will come crumbling down. Just wait until robots are taking away jobs from our existing system and it won't be able to handle it anymore. The article goes on to say that in the past all men worked unless they were feeble-minded or they were disabled. The shame of not working as a man was too great for them to stay unemployed. But the reason that most men are here listening to this video right now is because shame no longer works on us. As a man you don't have to care about being a loser if you're surrounded by millions of other men in the same exact position. The article says that men are happy to sit around and watch television, sponging off the government, their relatives, and even, God forbid, their girlfriends. Funny how Margaret, the author of this hit piece, as far as I'm concerned, is attacking men for sponging off the government when it's actually women that pay negative taxes to the state during their lifetimes. The article says that the rate of job destruction will continue to pick up steam and that non-working men are going to be contagious and that one-third of all men between the ages of 25 and 54 will be out of work in the next 30 years. This article says these disenfranchised males are mostly working class and they aren't going to church like the more successful males out there. I believe that shaming men to go back to work so they can provide social programs for women, as well as go back to church so they can become naive and juicy targets for potential wives, is the equivalent of telling women to go back to the kitchen and stay with abusive husbands for the sake of the children. The article then does a complete 180 and starts discussing how women are also the victims of the drug culture in many Rust Belt cities and states, and that women have gained a social license to drink and smoke, just like men. As our economies in Western countries continue to automate and outsource labor, we will continually see more and more disenfranchised males with no jobs, no money, no girlfriends, but they will have plenty of free time to think about their plight and to take it out on the state that is increasingly gynocentric and where the majority of politicians will eventually become females. You ladies shouldn't worry because soon enough your customer service and cashier jobs will be disappearing as well and there won't be enough government handouts and men out there with means to pay for your way either. A single man without a wife and kids doesn't need much more than a small room with a bed in it and possibly a television and computer to feel safe and secure. Most women on the other hand need McMansions and large apartments that will be impossible to maintain in the future in order to feel like their life is complete. It could also be that millions of men raised by single mothers saw how their mamas got free goodies from the government and now they're just following in their footsteps. The author also says that it'll be up to the winner of the election, i.e. Hillary Clinton, to help these men find all the answers. But so far, all Hillary Clinton has done is to call them a basket of deplorables. I guess she's about to find out, if she wins, what an army of unemployed and disenfranchised males are all about. I'm sure she expects them to riot and cause trouble for the state, but that's not what's going to happen. All men have to do to bring this system down is become lazy. We just need to take our money, convert it into cash, gold, silver, as well as Bitcoin, and possibly a little bit of land, and then pay as little tax as possible, while producing nothing and watching as the whole thing crumbles down around us. The government will print all the money in the world, but it won't be enough to stop this. Then we'll see just how great all those Muslim immigrants are in Western countries when they start carving out their own little states inside of Michigan, France, Germany, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. There'll be a miniature version of Kosovo in every single Western country with Muslim populations, and there will be a civil war as a result. Isn't it ironic that all it takes for a country to become destabilized is for men to do nothing at all? If women want to take everything away from us and demand all the goodies for themselves, then we won't sit down and negotiate with terrorists. Instead, we're going to walk away from the table and watch the whole game collapse. Women lack foresight because they're too small-minded to see what the end game is. Many revolutions happen when men become disenfranchised and no longer have a purpose in the society. 
The Second World War started because of the Nazis, and they grew to power because they were unemployed and disenfranchised as a group of males, and they were forced to pay reparations to France and England after the loss during the First World War. And once the Depression showed up, they overthrew the Weimar Republic and became increasingly aggressive. Unlike those men, my generation didn't actually have a great war and were for the most part not trained to be violent. Instead, we were trained to do the right thing and be non-violent. So now we are doing the right thing by sitting back and doing absolutely nothing at all. Our education system and the women or single mothers around us made us so-called lazy and self-centered because we just learned their lazy behaviors from them as well as other female authority figures what they were promoting. The people in charge are about to learn that when you actually feminize men by promoting this type of nonsense and political correctness, that those men just become lazy as women because it becomes socially acceptable and even promoted. Just to give you an example of this, I knew one guy that was working for a corporation doing land surveys for real estate, and his boss was willing to teach him the business over the next 5 to 10 years, and then eventually sell the company to him. Instead of doing that, he decided to start working for the government to take a job in that field at some nasty government office. I asked him why he would do that, and he told me that the people there only work between 30 minutes and an hour per day, and they get guaranteed benefits, and it's almost impossible to get fired because you're part of a union. He can plan his life around the guaranteed income and benefits instead of buying a company and building it up himself. This is what I mean when I say that men in our society have become feminized. They're no longer risk takers and they're willing to be just as lazy as women to take cushy jobs doing very little. It's not just the men that are supposedly lazy and not taking any work at all that are going to bring this sucker down. It's men that are working part-time jobs or government jobs that are also bringing it down as well. The guy taking this government job was not being an idiot. He told me he actually had to work at teaching himself how to do less work in the office so he wouldn't actually piss off the ladies and co-workers around him. When a guy has a job and works hard, if you work harder than the women around you, they often punish you for it. But if the guy has no job to begin with, then they also punish you as well. It's socially acceptable and politically correct to only put in a certain amount of effort into your work, otherwise you embarrass your co-workers if you work too hard, and you embarrass yourself if you don't work enough. And if you work yourself to death and make a lot of money and become extremely wealthy, then you're stealing from everyone else according to the people that have less money than you. They automatically see you as exploiting the workers, even if your genius and hard work was the reason for your success. The real problems begin when the people that are the most productive, i.e. men, make enough money to pay off a property and maybe get a second rental property as passive income and then just retire and stop working on any new ideas. Back when I was in my 20s, my goal was to purchase a house with no mortgage, rent out the basement, and then live upstairs for free off that rent that my renters were going to pay. I ended up getting distracted by two long-term relationships, so that plan went out the window. But it's now back on the table, and I hope to implement it soon. I thought to myself, why should I be productive and work hard to buy into a consumer culture when I know it's complete bullshit? Materialistically, I don't need a lot of stuff, and I'm pretty much happy with the stuff that has basic utility. I don't need expensive vehicles and trucks to chase pussy. I would rather retire in the next 5 to 10 years and raise a child properly to think critically and have him through surrogacy instead of working myself to death for some corporation or wife. Society would probably say that I was lazy for being a stay-at-home dad when I should be out there working and paying taxes to support all those poor underprivileged women out there who are lazy themselves. We've entered a weird sort of twilight zone where we reward women that do very little work while punishing men through high taxation who choose to apply themselves in business or their jobs. Men are not lazy because they choose not to work, Instead, they're smart because they figured out that working themselves to death to maintain a horrible system that's stacked against them is no way to go. But obviously, the government and women are going to shame men for not having jobs, and we're going to see this gain momentum in the future. As things eventually fall apart, men will be vilified and told that they aren't working hard enough and that the collapse of the economy is our fault because we're too lazy to work and solve the problems in the first place. No matter what happens, women will never come out as the responsible party, and they will always be seen as the victims. If Japan represents the future of Western cultures and societies, then Western men will be perfectly fine being seen as feminized, and they will no longer care about the shame or stigma attached with being unemployed or even underemployed. Another reason for men deciding not to work is because less of us have families and more of us see marriage as a scam against us. If we're only working for ourselves, then we don't need to work two or three times as hard to support a family. And the less money we make, the less taxes we pay. If we make a very tiny amount, say $1,000 a month, then we not only pay no taxes, 
but the government gives us benefits because we're classified as low-income earners. The trick is to build up your assets so you don't actually have to pay rent because you own your property and then make a little bit of money as rental income to cover your costs, and voila, you no longer have to work to support yourself outside of paying for food, transportation, and possibly entertainment. The bottom line is that if you want a stable government and society, you need to reward men for working as well as the ability to reproduce with women, and it doesn't actually have any legal consequences to destroy his life. Just today I heard about a man whose wife needed a change, so she started taking yoga, and her husband was happy because her mood had greatly improved. Eventually it turns out that she was banging the yoga instructor, and she forced him out of the house, took away the kids, and now the yoga instructor lives with her and the children. Until these types of situations can no longer happen, men are smart to be lazy and narcissistic, not get married and not produce wealth. But enough of my ranting. Thanks again, Pedro, for your donation as well as your topic request. Also, don't forget to check out the MGTOW mystery link in the description. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the mooching women away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.